Welcome to our presentation, Floor Plan Manager Transformation and Beyond. In the previous video, you have seen the differences between the classical FPM list and the FPM list on HANA, with respect to performance and with respect to features. You could also see how it fits into the classical FPM appearance. In this video, we show you how to transform a FPM list embedded in a classical FPM application to a list on HANA. First, we introduce the view we are using and explain how the application is built. Then we transform the application step by step. In addition, we show you how the FPM application creation tool, the ACT, leverages the capabilities of the FPM list on HANA to ease development. And last but not least, we present one FPM applications integrating charts based on the FPM on HANA capabilities. Let's start the FPM application. The application presents flight booking data. In a search pane, you can parameterize the search. The result is displayed in a FPM list. The application is based on a view definition. The ABAP name of the view is TRM book. You see here the tables which are joined, the join conditions and the field list. The language which we are using here is an extension of SQL. This is a CDS definition. CDS means core data service and it is a language aligned with HANA. This definition can also be used for creating a pure HANA artifact. But used in the ABAP layer with the ABAP annotation, it is an ABAP artifact like any other DDQ view with the advantages of the ABAP lifecycle management. Back to the application, you see data from the joint tables, bookings, flight and carrier informations, and airport data. How is it implemented? To show you this, we open the FPM configurator. We configure the search UI building block with four select options. The selection handling is implemented in the feeder class CLTRM book transform search. The search result is displayed in a list UI building block using the feeder class CLTRM book transform list. It displays all fields of our view. Now we have a closer look on the implementation of the feeder classes. The search feeder has to define the metadata for the search block and to prepare the user selections for the list building block. Therefore, the search interface has to be implemented. And we need a data definition to hand over the selections to the list. In this case, it is a simple structure containing the range tables for our select options. Let's have a brief look at the data definition method. It returns a structure descriptor and a field catalog. You can see here an example of the new concise ABAP syntax of the inline data declaration. Formerly, it was a good programming style to declare the data on top of a program or a subroutine or a method. But if you need a declaration for few statements only, declaring it in place makes the code more readable. We will see other examples later on, but the old more verbose syntax is still working. The method process event handles the execute search event and copies the generic selection tables in range tables, which we can use later on in the select statement. As the list will be truncated, we have also to copy the truncation parameter. That's it for the search feeder. The list feeder has to define the metadata for the list block and execute the selection. The feeder implements the list interface. The method getData is triggered when a new search is started. At the event execute search, we fetch the selections and the truncation parameter. Then we select the data into the data table accordingly to the select options and the truncation parameter. Then we check which data the user is authorized to see. In our examples of the other videos where we selected 100,000 rows, we tweaked the performance of the implementation. But for demo purposes, it is clearer to use this simple version. 
The feeder method also handles the reset of the selections. Now let's have a look at the data definition part. The method has to provide an instance of a structure descriptor and the field catalog. In the field catalog, we set some attributes for the columns in the list, like read-only, for example. That's it for the list feeder. Finally, we start the transformation. We do not have to change the search feeder, but only the list one. As the paradigm changes so fundamentally, the FPM on HANA, the IDA FPM list, uses a different interface. We have to implement the list IDA interface. With control one, we get a default implementation for the interface methods. Now we eliminate the old interface and the old methods, but only after having secured the code. Most of the methods are the same, but instead of get data, which in the classical version is handled by the application, we have the method process before output to handle the search values. And we have in addition the method start runtime where we have to initialize the IDA FPM list instance. We copy the code to the new methods and command it to be not confused by too many syntax errors. Step by step, we will reactivate and adapt it. And we start with the data definition. Activating the code again, we get some syntax errors. With F2, we can see the signature of the method and we see that we have to return a structure descriptor instead of a table descriptor. You may ask why we change the type voluntarily, but in fact, this is a correction of the classical signature. Second, the field catalog has a different type. The reason for this is that the classical type has grown over time and we want to offer only the attributes which make sense in this new context. So we have to delete the read-only attribute. Idealists do not support write scenarios. We are syntactically correct and continue with the new method start runtime, where we instantiate the IDA list. We need the reference during the whole lifetime of the list, so we define an instance attribute. In the method start runtime, the factory returns us an instance for the view TRM book. Now, after all, we can start the application again, and you see that it displays already the data of our view. Of course, it ignores the truncation parameter and the selections, but you can page in a result set of nearly 1.4 million records. So back again to the implementation to continue the transformation in adding authorization checks. We have to instrument the data source with the authorization checks to be performed. Therefore, we have to use a specialization of the data source object to get more features. Now we can add authorization objects to the data source. To see the differences, I copy the old implementation in place. The implementations are quite similar. We have to set the authorization object, the activity and the field mapping. By the way, you can see another example of the new concise ABAP syntax. You can even define tables in line. Especially if you have only one line in the table, this is very comfortable and helpful. Now we run again the application. It compiles and in the list not much difference to see. So we continue to work on the select options in the method process before output. The method process before output replaces the classical get data. But instead of selecting the data, we only have to instrument the data source with the select options. So we reactivate the case statement and see that the interface has slightly changed. We get our selections and have to transform them now into the format the data source object expects as input. As convenience, we can use a helper class which transforms the select options into the type for the data source object. This is a bit of manual work for all the four select options copy and paste, and replacing the correct names of the variables. 
some typos to be corrected. And finally, we're done with that. The method getCollectedRanges returns the data type the data source object expects. And again, we use the new concise syntax. Finally, we are done and run our application and test the selections. We enter select options, search, and here we are. Back again in the program, we have one task left. We have to implement the reset to default. Therefore, we just set an empty table of selections. One remark to the new syntax. In this case, its usage is quite intransparent and it would be better to define the data type for the select values as local variable at the top of the method. But I'll not change it now and run the application. You can select and reset to default. We are done now with the transformation of the classical list to an IDA list. Like in the ALV example, I could show you how to use fuzzy search or other features beyond the pure transformation. But let's rather see what the application creation tool, the ACT, can do with the IDA list. We start the application creation tool in the Project Explorer and use the Sapana paradigm. We have to enter namespace, which is applied to all artifacts created within the wizard. Then the tool offers us to use different object models. In a sweet environment, these are, beside the DDIC entities, also BOP objects. But here we select our view, which we already know from the transformation, and accept all proposals of the wizard. We ignore the association page, assign a package, and finish. We can run the application, and here we are. The well-known page is displayed, and I can start the selection, all out of the box. This is the version where I'm using a predefined view. The tool can do more. You can dynamically create views, just defining a UI. To show you this, we start the application creation tool again, this time for the table as book. Now I'll take the time to explain the association page. We see here the tables of views which are related to S-Book by a foreign key relationship. In the BOPF case, this will be the BOPF associations. To give you a comparison with our predefined view, I open the CDS definition. There we define a join with SCAR. We do it in the ACT also. The same for the table SPFI and airline. As you can see, we need to join with the airline tables two times for the departure and the destination airport. The tool proposes these relations. In addition, we had to use aliases in the view definition. The tool proposes suffixes to create aliases for all fields. Now we continue and accept all proposals. And again, we launch the application, and again, the same list. We can work with it and select data, nothing new, except that we just used the tool and the data model and didn't write any line of code. I want to tweak the list now. We could start the Fluid tool, but I prefer to work with the Project Explorer and open the List UI building block directly there. You see here all elements which you can use by joining the tables. We can rearrange them and to keep it simpler, I delete most of them. On the remaining one, we will continue to work on. The tool proposes to display only a certain number of fields. Therefore, we have to set the display option for the airport names. Here you can change also the column header without coding. In the list, you can see the changes different columns and headers. Back again in the tool, we will see that we can rework our join with the feeder parameters. I enhance the join with customer data. In the field list, I use the add field feature and can select the freshly joined table and fields. 
In this example, I use the email. We start the application and select the data. So we have different ways to achieve the goal. If you have complex joints you want to reuse, creating a DDGO or CDS view is an advantage. If you just want in one UI join a field, this dynamic view creation can be helpful. Just accordingly to your needs. And to close the session, we'll see what you can achieve with this approach. The following application is created without any manual implemented feeder class. You see our list of bookings, the flights, airlines and airports. The application selects the 1.4 million records. The pie chart shows the partition by departure airport. Frankfurt has 340,000, New York 218, Singapore 237,000 departures. We select now Singapore. The list below is adapted and selects the bookings with departure Singapore Airport. You see also the result list is smaller and most prominently you see the distribution of the destination airports. 40,000 from Singapore to Hong Kong and 38,000 to Bangkok. We continue and select Bangkok. Again the list and the result set are adapted to the selection and you get the distribution according to carriers and classes. We select the first class from Singapore to Bangkok. On the way back to the complete list, at each step the list is adapted to the selection. We select now the flights from New York to San Francisco. You can see that three airlines are busy on this route. This time we select the economy class of Delta Airlines. You may think that this is a gadget, but I am sure that there are good use cases for this visually attractive way to drill down to the data, still having the context information on hand. You do not like the pie chart? What about the tech cloud? Okay, this is an example for the application creation tool of the floor plan manager. It uses the IDA lists and you do not have to implement any feeder class manually. We are done now. And I hope that this video inspired you to experiment with the FPM list on HANA, either in the coded or in the modeled version of the application creation tool. It is not necessary to replace all classical FPM list implementations, but if you face problems with mass data or if you want to offer new ways for users to find the data, it is definitely an option. With this, I thank you for your interest and draw your attention on the video, the journey, looking where we are heading for.